Um, we're gonna walk through the removal suite right now. Um, again, I really like two for ones, if at all possible. Uh, Indrik Stompower uh, generally serves as a two for one. You get a dude, and uh, when he comes into play, you can take down an artifact or enchantment. Um, this guy's good with recursion and uh, highly suggested. Duplicant uh, is probably one of my favorite cards that. Uh, uh, you know, I never got to play with because I was mainly a standard player and I uh, just came to the game. So this guy seems like so amazing. He can uh, take your opponent's general. He can go through and um, basically remove all kinds of problematic creature cards and disrupt recursion himself. Uh, so if they have an eternal witness, uh, this is an outstanding guy to go copy them uh, and break their engine. Um, Duplicate's really, really strong card. Uh, spitting image is out of eventide and it allows you to put a token uh, that's a copy of a target creature in play um, so you can go and like kill off different legendary creatures uh, the legendary rule in uh, EDH functions a little bit different than in standard um, it uh, basically if you have two legendary creatures and one of them's the general the general doesn't die um, but the other creature will be put in the graveyard so you don't want to copy generals with this guy uh, but there's lots of other good legendary creatures that see play and if nothing else he can just straight copy another beast that's out on the field and then you get the retrace ability uh, which makes it typically uh, two for one uh, some of the gold removal cards that are really strong, uh, Pernicious Deed, um, this one's pretty incredible. Uh, it'll destroy all artifacts, creatures, enchantments uh, with converted mana cost less than uh, what you pay to pop it. Uh, so that's pretty good. It doesn't touch Planewalkers, but it's pretty decent in this deck. Putrefy, it's instant, and it can take down uh, important artifacts or creatures, uh, and it denies regeneration, which can sometimes uh, still be played in EDH. Clutch of the Undercity has Transmute, which uh, makes it an even better card. Uh, you can go and search for uh, cards um, with the same converted mana cost with this one. So you can go get other four costs like Damnation or something, uh, Board Sweepers, uh, just depends on what you need. Um, it also has a Return Target Permanent to its owner's hand and deals a little damage. Blue gives you bribery. This isn't as much removal from the hand, but it'll remove uh, fatty out of the deck of somebody else. Um, if you can go in and grab something like a Progenitus or a Dark Steel Colossus, I've seen that win game after game after game. So uh, check out bribery. It uh, costs a little bit, but in EDH, slow games make it okay. Might want to check this out. Um, it's pretty decent, uh, definitely has its applications and can be pretty strong for copying uh, other players' uh, card effects or your own card effects. Damnation. Uh, Damnation is uh, the classic thing that black never should have had, the ability to blow up all creatures. Decree of Pain, uh, you pay eight, but for that investment you usually get back uh, like a six for one or something like that if you, you time your cards right. We're going to go through a number of the counters that I play in the deck. Uh, I usually like roughly about 10 to 12 counters. Um, I like 10 to 12 draw cards and 10 to 12 uh, mana fixers or mana ramp cards. So if you guys are kind of looking for a formula, that's uh, generally what I start with. Um, so I go 35 land and then 10, 10, 10. Uh, I like tutors when available and then I just kind of build from there depending on if I have a certain theme going on. Uh, we have rewind here. It's uh, instant and it's going to counter the spell and untap four lands. Dissipate is amazing. Uh, it counters target spell and you can remove it from the game. So if something's pesky, this will break up a recursion engine. Perplex has transmute. Uh, it'll let you go get a three cost card. Um, I'm going to play Yogmoth's Will, so this card can search up the Yog Win. Uh, it's definitely good, and it also has a counter target spell unless a controller discards their hand. Behind that one was Hide and Pact and Negation. Uh, it's always a sneaky card, can pop out of nowhere, and basically, uh, Pact is a staple. You just better uh, remember to pay that upkeep cost. Uh, in big multiplayer games, sometimes that goes forgotten. Factor Fiction is going to give us some card draw and uh, let us throw things into a couple of piles. Uh, generally, if you have a friendly opponent, this will uh, let you get in there um, and, and grab some of your counters or just additional cards. Remand is going to counter target spell and uh, put it back in your opponent's hand. So uh, this is particularly good with cards that uh, are coming into play on the cheap or uh, somebody's doing some tricks. There's the classic counter spell. 
uh, counter spell is uh, very cost efficient and I can never find a reason it's not very fancy but uh, there's definitely no reason not to play it. One of the best um, counters in all of EDH uh, when your opponent brings in their general this is going to allow you to take their general card and rather than letting it uh, go to their exiled zone you can stick it on the bottom of their deck. Uh, if their deck is pretty general centric uh, Hinder is going to help you take it down. Trick Bind is going to allow you to counter activated or triggered abilities. Uh, this can occasionally be useful. Um, you can either use it to stifle somebody's land or to go ahead and uh, do some big tricks on an important effect that they're counting on. Uh, activated abilities get pretty busted when you look at all the vintage cards. So having one of these as a, a kind of hidden trick is not a bad idea. And Cryptic Command is now and uh, hopefully going to be forever one of the best uh, one of the best counter spells in the game. It gives you lots of different modes and uh, adds to the playability of your counter spells. Um, we have Force of Will, which is a classic. I play plenty of blue, and uh, this is always a good surprise, um, only to be bested by perhaps. One of the rare counter spells, Mana Drain. Uh, mana Drain's awesome, and when they're getting rid of Mana Burn, uh, it makes this card a stallion. Every deck should play at least some fatty. Uh, I like to throw this guy out because he's very hard to deal with. He has Flying Trample and can't be the target of uh, spells or abilities. Uh, he's pretty decent in the late game. We have Maul Drifter. Maul Drifter comes into play and you get to draw two cards. You can evoke it for cheap or pay five and get a, a flyer and it will give you a three for one generally in those situations. Glen Ellinger Archmage is amazing in EDH. It stops uh, so many classic cards uh, it's hard not to play with. Mystic Snake uh, is a big surprise and um, it makes it com complex for people who are trying to uh, interrupt some of your spells. Um, you can throw this guy in and the mana is always tricky. The last couple of utility cards that I'd like to discuss uh, have to do with the recursion engine and uh, the first piece of it is Genesis. Genesis is good with utility creatures because most of them are two for one so you're bringing them back and then gaining card advantage over time. Uh, Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness, uh, like I said before, is kind of one of the driving forces of the engine in my deck. Uh, she's going to recur some of the big um, time walk effects that I have. We're looking at Time Warp. Uh, time Warp allows you to take an extra turn for five mana and then the big boy who sometimes just wins games by himself through attacking uh, is Time Stretch and uh, I'm going to kind of show something here real quick. Vorosh has um, an effect that says when he deals combat damage to a player you can pay three green and if you do put a 1-1 one -one counter on him. So if you have mana available uh, you can throw down Vorosh, attack um, pay the three green and he'll become a 12-12 uh, time stretch attack again pay the three green he's an 18-18 and then you can attack again um, so he'd be a 24-24 uh, who just ends the game for whoever he deals combat damage to uh, because general damage all you need is 21 the Vorosh uh, time stretch combo uh, is kind of the whole reason that I made this deck. We've talked about the Yogg win before. Uh, this is a great recursion card. You just have to be careful not to remove essential pieces of your uh, recursion engines. If you just want to one shot, bring something back, get a good advantage out of it. Perfect card. Uh, the last two cards in the recursion engine are regrowth and restock. Uh, regrowth is amazing. Um, it can bring back uh, Eternal Witness. It can bring back Time Stretch. It kind of functions as a pseudo uh, Eternal Witness. Uh, restock usually gives you two giant pieces that you need. And uh, between those cards and all the other cards I have, I usually uh, can get back pretty much anything I need. Um, so that's pretty much the 100 card list. You've gone through uh, all the cards and you've seen how I break my decks down. I have a good amount of counter, card draw, and I like to do uh, tricks with recursion sometimes. Uh, I don't play very many huge fatties. Uh, I like Planeswalkers and uh, I think one of the most important things is to fix your mana and excel and try to stay in the game and play like all the big wonderful cards that are great in slow EDH games.